All right, so let's get started. I'm going to launch Xcode Beta. And just to make sure, it, I am using Xcode 11 Beta. And you have to use that if you want to use Swift UI. All right. Uh, on the other hand, I am actually using Mac OS Mojave. So this means that I don't really have the functionality or the feature of live reloading. So I will have to actually create either a playground or a project. I'm just going to create a project. Single view application is fine. Uh, I'm just going to call it blog and make sure this check mark or checkbox is checked, which says use Swift UI. Let's go to the next one. And that's perfectly fine. Just create it on the desktop for now. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and run our application so that you can at least see the hello world kind of a text. So let's go ahead and run this. For the first time when you're running, it might take a little bit of time as you already know, but all the subsequent builds will be a little bit faster. Okay, so it's trying to launch, might take a little bit of time, but it, when it does launch it, it will show us hello world as you can see. Okay, great, so that's working. What we want to do is we want to get all the data from a URL. Now, I already have the URL and the URL is nothing complicated. It's basically this one, which is just some dummy values for the post. So it's not really real data, but it's great for our case because we can simply use it. I'm going to go ahead over here and create a new folder and I will call this services. And inside over here, I can go ahead and add a new file, which I can call web service. Okay. I can also add another folder for my models and I can go ahead and add a new model. Since we're getting all the posts, well, I'm just going to call it post.swift. Not much going on in post.swift. Let's go ahead and create that. Struct post. It will be, it will have the title and it will have the body. And since our JSON that we are going to retrieve from the web service is going to map onto this particular post or decode it. We have to make sure this is codable. All right, great. Now let's go back to web service. I already have the web service code. I'm not going to type it again. It's a simple NSURL session that's going to go and get all the data. When it gets the data, it simply calls the completion handler and that's it. Let's go ahead and run this, build this right now. Okay, great. So that is really good. Now I can go back to my content view. And the question is, where should I call the web service and how can I display or pass the data to the content view or basically to the body? One option is to call it inside the init. And let's see even if we can get the data. Forget about displaying it right now. Let's see even if we can get the data. So if I'm calling this get all post and printing out whatever it returns. Let's go ahead and run it and see if it actually returns us anything. If it does return us the post, it will be displayed on the console. And you can see in the output window, you can see all the posts. So that is working correctly, all right? But in order to view it on our screen, we will use the help from a bindable object. So what I'm going to do is create a new group and I will call it view models. And inside the view models, I'm going to create a view model for this particular screen. All right. So the view model in this case, you can call it anything, but I'm just going to call it post list because it will be a list of posts view model. Great. Let's go ahead and create that. And now I can go ahead and create this class. So final class post list view model, which is a bindable object. All right. I'm also going to import combine framework. Combine framework is more of a, a reactive way of doing things. All right. Now it does have to have one type of, so basically we have the bindable object over here. We must also conform to it, which means that we should have some sort of a subject over here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and declare a did change equals to. So this is the event that we're going to fire. And that event is actually going to give us the post 
list view model and it's not going to return us anything ever. So it's going to give us this, but the return value will be nothing. All right. Let's go ahead and build that. Oh, also make sure that you import Swift UI. Okay, great. Now we can actually go ahead and start working on that where should we call the fetch post or where should we call get all post. So over here in my init, I can actually call a function called fetch post. Now we don't really have a function called fetch post, so let's go ahead and create that. Function fetch post. And then I can call the web service that we created earlier on, get all post function. But now where should I assign the post? Well, I need to have some sort of a property that where we can assign the post. So let's go ahead and create that var post. It will be a type of a post initial value. And whenever it is set, then go ahead and notify whoever is listening that that particular property is set. Actually, notify with the whole thing, meaning the post list view model. And now I can go over here and update that. Let's go ahead and build that. Great. Now, finally, let's move to the content view. So I'm going to go to the content view now. And this is not going to work. I mean, if you try to assign this to the post, it's just not going to do anything. So now what we can do is we can create our model equals to post list view model. All right. And then inside this view, I can use a list component or a list, pass in the model.post, because model itself is just a post list view model and it has a property called post. Let's go ahead and pass that. And then we will get access to each post, which we can use to create a text, which will be post.title. All right. Uh, cannot convert the value. Okay, so let's first go over here and uh, make sure that this is, well, our post is codable, but it has to have a couple of different things also for it to work. And one of those things is actually called hashable. Not like that, I guess. Hashable. And the other one is identifiable, which is in a separate framework, which will import, which is Swift UI. And when you're creating a identifiable, you also have to provide something that can be used to identify that post. So we're just going to have the int property and that's fine for us. All right. Now we will go to the content view. Okay, great. And now it's not complaining anymore. Let's go ahead and run it. Now if you run it, it's not displaying anything. The reason it's not displaying anything is that this is an asynchronous event, right? I mean, we what we want to do is we want to make sure that we update or run this body again or build the body again once we got the result back. So in this case, we have to say state over here. State is basically means that you're changing the state. So this is going to return after a while. And when it does return and assign it to model, the model changes. And when the model changes, basically the state changes. When the state changes, it automatically fires the body, meaning it automatically runs the body again, which in turn, you get all the elements. And well, you can see the list now. Pretty cool, right? Now, obviously, we're simply using the list component or a list control over here. So we don't really have the navigation bar and everything. But you can see it's pretty fast. Everything is working as expected. And there you have it. Just with a couple of lines of code, you were able to create a list. And now all you need to do is to add different things to the list. I mean, if you want to modify and add the subtitle, just go ahead and do that right over here in the UI. So there you have it. If you like this video and it helped you, then check out my courses on Udemy. That's the best way to support my work. I have a link in the description. Simply go over there and you can find all of my different courses, which are including Swift 5, Node, which is my brand new course, uh, and RxSwift, 
Intermediate Advanced Development Blockchain Development AR Kit, and a lot more, even MVVM framework. So there's a lot of stuff that I have been learning and creating all of these things. So hopefully you'll find the course that you like, and uh, thank you so much for your support.